gender is organization of institutions. This is another aspect of socio-cultural point of view, socio-cultural anthropological point of view regarding gender. First, we talked that gender is some individual action. Then we said that gender is part of some group action and now we are uh, putting forward an other point of view which says that gender works as organizer of institution. How it happens? Let's see. Some scholars say that gender is a personal trait. It is limited to ways of talking in family and among friends or in peers and classmates, etc. So this is our personal quality, feature, property. But some scholars stress the role of gender in organization of social institution. They give it a very important role. The, uh, beyond being an individual property or feature of one's personality. Gender, how it organizes, it assigns roles and norms of a workplace. At a workplace, what roles would be performed by which people? This is defined by gender. And you may be already experiencing it in your own life, even being a student. In workplaces, in professions, in promotions, everywhere, things are defined, classified, allocated on the basis of gender. This is the way gender assigns the role of organizer of these things. In defining roles, it is not gender speech style as was previously held that your style of talk as men or woman, it defines your gender. It is not that we are rejecting that point of view or we are rather we should say we are disagreeing with that point of view. But other factors beyond speech style, other factors like physical power, basic rights, etc., they are also important besides our speech style. Now, a task would help you to relate these ideas with the previous ones so that you may understand what do we mean when we assign the role of organizer to a cultural category that is called gender. In this task, I would assign you uh, a particular uh, a writing activity. In many areas of Pakistan, gender separation is common in almost every activity of life. Whether there is some family function, whether there is some shopping activity, whether there is education, uh, whether you go to school, so gender separation is very common in such societies. Even in transport, in buses, these seats are for men, these seats are for women. So gender separation is very common in some societies uh, and even in some areas of Pakistan. Can men and women adopt speech styles of one another in such conditions? Because we are saying that when people interact with each other, they adopt each other's speech styles and they adopt each other's norms and they adopt each other's points of view. So how it would happen when people are not allowed to mix with each other? Collect information from online or print resources, I mean uh, from uh, research journals through internet, for example, on Google. Uh, you uh, you uh, can visit Google Scholar. 
this is a website from which you can download papers, research papers regarding this topic. And you can also find help from print resources like books and uh, other things and write a report. Even newspapers, documentaries, they can help you. Do mention sources of your information with your report, with your writing, and you can also include visuals and maps in this report. This task would practically help you to understand the ideas discussed in this module. Another task is for the same purpose, interview men and women in your nearby village or town about the activities, ask them about their work, daily course in which women can participate. You may conclude that with the help of this discussion and after going through these tasks of writing and interviewing, you will know that gender as a principle of social organization assumes role of a gatekeeper. Because what is meant by gatekeeper? Gatekeeper, you know, can allow you to enter some place or disallow you. So here gender becomes a gatekeeper in participating different social activities. Some, uh, in some domains of your society, you are allowed to join and others you are prohibited. So it allows or disallows access to resources. This is much more important uh, thing. Resources are also allocated, are provided, opportunities are also provided on the basis of your gender. The places, the positions in offices, in organizations, and uh, all these things, when they are allotted and allocated on the basis of gender, what would be the result? The result would be inequality. So this is the minus side, negative side of interaction, taking part in activities of community of practice. What happens? You may change your point of view, but at the same time, in certain societies, you also face the role of gatekeeping performed by gender. In this role, gender creates injustice, inequality, just like class, race, and ethnicity do. We have talked about that these factors sustain, promote gender division, gender discrimination. So exactly on the same lines, your gender as an organizer creates inequality. Here you have some practical work. This point of view that gender creates inequality in different social domains in certain societies. This point of view was offered by Scott. In this task, you would try to address the question whether Scott's point of view is convincing with reference to our context or not. Discuss with evidence to support or reject these views. By evidence means that uh, you would bring statistics, you can bring a news reports, you can bring some uh, court decisions, etc., etc., to support your point of view. You can bring economic policies of the government. You can bring job assignments, job aids, allocation of seats in educational institutes, etc., to support uh, your point of view. You can cite examples from history, from politics, or from any movie or novel that you have recently uh, watched or read. So this is the task that uh, you would do to understand the ideas discussed in this month.